days in the Bay Area may feel worse than they actually are. A report from our partners at Climate Center is highlighting some practices that make cities hotter than they otherwise would be. ABC 7 News meteorologist Drew Tuma joins us live with a look at something called heat islands. Drew. Yeah, um, uh, they're called urban heat islands, and you might be surprised which Bay Area city made the list. Watching the cool gray fog roll in, it may stretch your imagination to consider San Francisco a heat island, but not when you consider the criteria. Basically, all we're saying is if the, the geography and the landscape wasn't as it was, you guys would be even colder. Senior data analyst Jennifer Brady and her colleague Caitlin Weber are with Climate Central. In a recently released study, their analysis ranked San Francisco number five on a list of the top 20 urban heat islands nationwide. The index ranks the heat patterns in a city against its natural outlying area, focusing on the man-made factors that heat it up. What things we build our, our buildings with, the heights we build them, the mixture and variety of the heights and stuff like that. The report points to factors like high-rise canyons that trap hot air, building and road materials that absorb heat rather than reflect it, and a scarcity of natural environmental coolers like tree canopy. They say that can all add up to a roughly 7-degree increase in average temperature during summer months. The forces that come together to create urban heat islands can be complicated, but luckily there are things cities can do to help cool things down a little. Robin Grossinger is with the San Francisco Estuary Institute. The group is working with the city as part of a large-scale planning project called Next Generation Urban Greening. To help them figure out how to maximize um, urban greening, um, the kinds of things we're talking about, tree canopy, stormwater infrastructure. San Francisco has already introduced programs to green streets and allow stormwater to penetrate sidewalks. But Grossinger says the challenge is to expand the greening into denser and sometimes lower income neighborhoods where the buildings and sidewalks weren't laid out to accommodate trees. It is a challenge with the affordability and housing crisis because obviously we need to make our cities denser, but we think we probably also need to make them greener at the same time. Proposed solutions include reconfiguring sidewalks to make room for trees, adding roof gardens, and using more heat reflective building and road materials. It's a challenge that will take planning, perhaps block by block. You can think about what are some of the small changes we can make to start to bring this temperature down. And since we know the climate is changing, we know we expect it to continue changing, we can use these things to better build in the future. Now, according to Climate Central, several desert cities in the southwest did not make the list. The reason why, because even though they're warm because of natural heat, their building materials and their layouts actually take advantage of the cooling opportunities available. Alma? Wow. So many things that we don't always think about, Drew, that contribute to this. So, exactly. all right. Thank you so much.